Okay, so this is a video showing how the consumer unit's been wired. Top half of the consumer unit is just standard workloads, no protection. So how it's been done. These are my 25 mil tails coming, this is live, so I've got to be careful. These are my 25 mil tails coming in, out to a standard bus bar, which then feeds all the RCBOs. All the negatives of the RC or neutrals of the RCBOs go to there. And what they've done, I don't know how thick those cables are, but they've taken two tails down here, down into the Type C. So the Type C then goes via a bus bar underneath here. These two breakers are the two breakers for that lead out to the Victrons. This breaker is the breaker that feeds the bypass. So what normally happens is the power goes out to the Victrons up there. This is the return from the two Victrons parallel, paralleled up. So normally we're over on what I call what they call generator in. So the power comes out of there and then they've put um, a, a link lead from there to the bus bar there, which runs all the positives of all these RCBOs. And all the neutrals from the RCBOs, they've just put back into that into that hole there, basically. I'm not gonna take that off because it's live, I'll switch it all off. So this this is the bypass. So what happens is if I, if I switch this off, so you've probably heard the UPS has come on and the lights have gone off in here. So then effectively all my, no, I've got a talking house. So all these are now off. And what I do is I basically turn this on. So all of these are live again. So what's happening now is that the power is coming through this one into that one and then out of there. And then it runs all of these. So the idea is, is that I can now go and turn my Victrons off completely uh, there's no power, you know, there's power coming out of these right now, but um, effectively if they'd failed or you wanted to do a firmware upgrade or something, you can um, deal with that. Now I don't just flick this over, over even though this is a break before make switch, um, there is a difference in the voltage between when it's on grid on, on the Victron on battery. So what I do is I flick that off. So I still have a UPS, one of these feeds here is the UPS. of. Um, this is like my computer room here. So, you know, things that I'm not too bothered about, but the computers and all the IT kit, I run on a UPS. And you can hear that the, the talking house is telling me that. So then I put this down to here. And then we're back on to the output of the, the Victrons. And that's basically it. So it just comes from when you have UPSs really, um, when you have like UPSs in computer rooms and that, you always want to buy, you want to bypass so you, you're not relying on them. Given that you've defined all of these loads as critical loads, the last thing you want to have is that your Victrons fail, even when you've got a grid and none of your critical loads are working. So this is what the point of that is, is that I can just work around the Victrons if I'm not using them. So this is basically, these are the, this is AC in to the Victrons, and these are the two AC out ones from the Victrons. So the power just comes back from the Victrons through here, through there. Positive goes up to these RCBOs, the neutrals around the back, and then that goes out to all my selected loads. Up here, it's just basically a standard consumer unit, um, but they, they've teed off under there to bring a feed down to here. This is a type B breaker. Um, I, it's the, the tripping, I was having very intermittent trips, but it turned out to be the garage lights. I had fluorescent lights in the garage. Um, since I've changed them, it seems to be pretty stable. It's not been tripped for, for ages. Um, don't really know what else there's to say about that really, but hopefully that answers questions about how to wire it.